Good morning, folks. It is Friday, and we are doing another live style morning news so we can get a little bit more detail about how we do everything here. So first, coming and checking out the last day on our star. We're in 193 angstroms here, and you can see that we don't have a whole lot of activity. Uh, we'll watch it again here over at spaceweathernews.com. This does loop, uh, so once the animation is over, it'll just kick back, take the latest images, and update again. Be sure you use this resource. And while we're here, most of your questions about space weather can be answered by clicking what is space weather right up there. Uh, we're going to quickly come over to the Solar Dynamics Observatory website, and we're going to watch the 48-hour uh, looping view in, a, in 304 angstroms, uh, we can see some of the plasma, some of the plasma filaments sticking up uh, off the limb. You can see some of the little ejecta coming off the limb as well. Really not much in terms of major CMEs in any heliographic longitude. Uh, we do have some of those plasma filaments coming in as we just saw. Uh, scrolling down, you can see solar flaring, absolutely a dud, uh, barely even trying to get into B-class range, which that's really low. Uh, coming to the solar wind here, you can see in purple that trend downward, the speed is decreasing. Uh, we have no major bumps upward in density in orange uh, or in the plasma temperature. In fact, we have quite a, you know, quite a few examples of the opposite, spikes downward in plasma temperature. So the stream is, uh, the stream is very much easing right now. You can see over there, that's the KP index. Uh, we are very much in the safe zone. Uh, except in one regard. This right here is the continued uh, electron radiation storm from the sun. Let me go ahead and come down to the electron fluence at this point. We have officially, and this was not the case when I checked last night, but this line right here, that's where we are right now. Follow it across. It's definitely higher than that line, higher than that one, and it has exceeded that spike uh, that will be leaving the charts in a couple of weeks, but it doesn't matter if it does or doesn't. Right now, as we speak, we are at the highest electron fluence of the last year. That's, that certainly is interesting, to say the least. Anyway, the reason that the solar flaring has been so low is because the sunspots are absolutely pitiful. These things have done no development, no morphing for days and days and days. Of course, we'll be watching as they get to the departing limb, as that seems to be a uh, invigoration point and launch pad. Still nothing really going on with these tiny little spots over there. I don't know if you can see them, but not really much going on to those. Okay, folks, now we're going to take a look at a couple of our top stories today. This is from NASA's Goddard Scientific Visualization Studio. Of course, it is the inner solar system. Trailing behind Earth there is Kepler. The article at play here talks about Kepler's latest look at Neptune, and we're going to go ahead and watch its field of view and the zoom in on Neptune here because this view of one of the furthest out objects in our solar system is very cool. As we get closer you can actually see uh, Neptune's moons uh, actually coming in around the planet there. Anyway, the point of this is that uh, they're talking about how Kepler was able to see a number of different things uh, including uh, some of the weather. Uh, we've seen lots of auroras on Uranus as well. Uh, you see the the great cold spot right there. Uh, it was also able to give us a, a lot more uh, interesting insight into some of the weather patterns uh, throughout the rotational period and orbital period uh, of Neptune. Uh, speaking of getting some details on some planets, uh, a lot of you know that Cassini is doing its dive in between Saturn's rings. Uh, they've posted the first couple images. These were just taken two days ago. We'll just run through them. Some of the detail on these, uh, one does hope that they will end up getting a little bit better um, in terms of resolution, but even without it, you can already tell that some of the features that they're able to see um, on Saturn really are fascinating and uh, really, really interesting that we're going to be able to get uh, hopefully some more information. Okay, that's the team there. Congratulations, everybody, but we are more interested in the pictures. Anyway, moving on. Okay, we're going to come over to the wind map now, and just quickly for your records, this website has changed its name once again to now it is just windy.com. I do believe the old link will still take you there. Anyway, we're going to quickly run through what's going on in the United States the rest of tonight in the hopes that you'll be able to apply that to your part of the world when you pull up this website. But we are focusing here uh, because as I switch from pressure to the rain and the snow, 
I want you to watch what happens throughout the day today as these two low pressure systems sort of combine a convergence line right in here and just watch the next couple of hours. I'll actually zoom in there. Tonight, uh, <laughs> there's actually a story on the, the Weather Channel homepage talking about the grand finale. Uh, this is going to be one, uh, one heck of a storm, and it's going to go into Saturday. I'm now into Saturday, Saturday evening here. Now we're getting into Sunday. Sunday, it becomes one of those knuckling storms with the vertical convergence line. We are now getting into Monday. You can see the, uh, the time stamps and everything down at the bottom. And then it's not really until Tuesday that the convergence line finally gets offshore. Uh, and we should have some high pressure just offshore in the southeast at this point. Yeah, high pressure just offshore, and that's really going to push, push everything north and keep that low pressure system uh, over there where it is. Anyway, a couple last little notes here, folks. Weatherman's Guide to the Sun is now available with all the other Thunderbolts books over at David Harrison's shop. Very much thank you for that. We all do belong in the same place. I'd love you to get the Disaster Prediction app available on Apple and Android and uh, for free, sign up, start predicting earthquakes, and of course, learning how before you do that. We are starting to have a lot of fun over there. We will be trying to get a new Deeper Look episode out for website members of suspiciousobservers.org. We're going to do this all again right here in the morning. Make sure you heed your weather alerts when you can. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.